But it's like you see the numbers. You see the numbers of people that don't believe. You see the numbers of people that are leaving. And y'all still want to throw scriptures at people. You want to throw scriptures and stuff so quickly that you just don't even give people the opportunity to mourn, to hurt, hurt with people. As much as I want to say that your position on this surprises me, I really can't. What is wrong with encouraging people in the word? There's nothing wrong with letting people grieve, but you don't want to get on that level with them. Because you, you're supposed to lift people out of that grief, out of that place of sorrow. And what's the best way to do that? The word. And you of all people should know that because aren't you the one who quoted For God shall wipe away yes, every tear from the eye. But again, what's wrong with encouraging people in the word? What about Romans 8.18? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The sufferings of this present time. So while you're talking about those people that have been dealing with the hurricanes and all the other storms down there in Florida and on the East Coast, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in those people and in their lives. What's wrong with telling them that? And since you wanted to try to complain about how Christians don't give people a moment to grieve and how we don't feel sorrow for people who are going through things, sure we do. Of course we do. But the Bible also says in 1 Thessalonians verse 4, 13, chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. We're not supposed to have sorrow and feel certain levels of sadness and depression the same way as unbelievers. Not to say that the people, there's people out there who suffer through this are unbelievers, but at the same time, that means since we are strong believers and we are on the front line for Christ, it is our duty to always go to the word as our source of encouragement for other people and ourselves. You could teach them that through the suffering, God still has his hand on them. And that's going to produce hope. Hope that things are going to work out. And hope that all these things are going to be replaced. And regardless of what the government is doing or not doing, that God is going to be the one to make sure that they are provided for. Because he, because he is the ultimate source. What about 2 Corinthians 4, 17? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory eternal weight of glory eternity not what's here on the earth not the physical things that we're looking at not the physical things that these people lost but the eternal weight of glory because of this light affliction this is a light affliction compared to how things could have turned out they're still alive so that means god has something for them to do he's going to replace everything that was stolen from them but you don't want to tell them that i don't know if you consider yourself a preacher or motivational speaker or what you are but you are on the front line representing Christ. And as someone who is supposed to be such a strong figure, you look very weak right now. So if you don't have the strength to encourage other people, if you're so tired of people just being so positive in the face of darkness, then maybe this is not the career for you. Maybe you're just now realizing that. So if you're not strong enough to handle it, step aside and let other people who know what to do handle things.